Good morning. It's nice to see you all this morning. Just a, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, you notice we're absent Pastor Elliot. Um, he's not feeling well. And so he's staying home and, you know, not coughing. Well, not here anyway. He's probably there, but not here. So uh, that's the issue with him. Um, what that means for communion at this point, uh, we've got kind of a sparse crowd and, and we're short an elder tooth. And so what we're going to do is uh, I'll stand like here. I'm going to ask even on the outside sections, you come down the middle. And then I'll give you the uh, wafer, uh, the Lord's body, and then you go and get from whatever side you're on from the guy hung, hanging on to the uh, individual cups. Is that okay? Got it? Okay. Hopefully I remember when I get there. That's always the bigger issue, isn't it? A couple of other important things. Um, Lutheran World Relief truck the, with, for all the goodies that have been made, the quilts and other stuff. It's going to be out here uh, by the uh, shed, barn, whatever you want to call that thing out there. Uh, they still need people to help um, stack the stuff into the truck. Okay, If you can do that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet across from the school office. Go out down the hall. There's a sign-up sheet someplace along there. Uh, or else called Doris August and tell her you're willing to help. Her number if, is in the church directory or under the category of friends. Okay? She's not a member, uh, but she does a lot of stuff here for us. She's a member of Trinity and Warren. And her number is under uh, the friends category in that as well. Also, we have a prayer vigil coming up, and there are three ways to participate. Uh, it will be Saturday morning between 9.30 and 10.30. Uh, you can attend in person, person, watch it on our Facebook page, as it will be on Facebook Live, or uh, it's also being recorded, so you can watch it at any time and pray in that way. Uh, there will be an email that goes out tomorrow so that you can see how to handle that as well. And finally, uh, we wish happy birthday to Paul Eschman. Paul's birthday is today, so he's 29. <laughs> right, Paul? Yeah, he'll go with that. 38, okay. <laughs> and also Erna Cush, who is not at the service today, but she's 97 today. So please right now just wave to one another and we begin our service.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We take a moment of science reflection on God's word upon our sin and God's great grace in Jesus. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. <coughs> people to my teaching, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. <laughs> Things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of your bountiful goodness, keep us from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish whatever you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 28. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put, his head, put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land in which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. St. Paul says, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away all falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil that the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands 
so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. We read together. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you come again and again to us with a gracious word in your Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we can see your help in our times of need, and that we might look forward to the praise not only of this day, but of eternity. Grant us this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Many, many times, it's pretty easy to be a Christian. There's a lot of things that come in our lives that it's easy to, to find great joy in and to thank God for. And even in the midst of tears and sadness, so often we find it relatively easy to be a Christian. We may mourn at death, but at the same time, we, we know that those who have died in the faith are resting with Christ. And that brings comfort and increases hope in us. And though it's difficult, even as we mourn, we look forward with hope and joy. But there's so many other times in our lives as Christians when it's not easy. Because there's the flip side of death that brings with loneliness and the emptiness in our hearts. There's also the problem throughout our lives too, aren't there, with just the things of life, from day to day working, when our jobs and our vocations just become overwhelming to us and we don't know what's going to go on. And then there are the days when everything seems to go wrong. And sometimes those days go from days to weeks to months even. And we wonder at times, what is going on? Where is God? How in the world are we supposed to handle these struggles? How are we to handle these doubts? Where are you, God? What is going on? It's not always easy, is it, to be a child of God? Jacob, in our text from the Old Testament reading, he can understand that. Here's Jacob who was in great trouble. He was running away from his family. His mom and his dad told him he needed to flee to a distant land because his brother Esau was going to kill him. He was seeking to destroy him. The reason, well, Esau is the older son. He thought he should get the blessing of, from his father that he should receive the blessing that would, the Messiah would come through them. But when Rebekah heard of this, that Isaac was planning and doing it, well, they had a little subterfuge going on, and they disguised Jacob so that Isaac, the blind father, could not see the difference. Now, we, we are quick to blame Jacob and Rebekah, aren't we? But you know what? Don't... Don't let Isaac off the hook too quick. He knew the promise of God, that the older will serve the younger. He knew that God had intended for this to happen. Except in his sin, Isaac, well, he preferred the, uh, the older son. He was kind of a man's man. He was out amongst the fields. He loved to hunt. He loved to fish. He loved to do all those things that Isaac valued. And so... Rebecca and Jacob were somewhat forced into that position. Not that they were without sin in their lives, but they knew the promise and they were living by that promise. And now, Jacob had to flee. He had to run. He was leaving the very place that was supposed to come to him and his descendants. For that was the blessing given to, to Jacob. The blessing given to Abraham and to Isaac that they would have this land and that their descendants would be so abundant that they would overrun the land from east to west, north to south. And here was Jacob fleeing from the very place that supposedly was promised to him. You see, that's the problem. And you can imagine the feelings that Jacob was having. He was tired, he was weary. He was tired enough that he would use a rock as, a, as a, a pillow, which seems weird to me. And in his sleep, God came to him in a dream. God came to Jacob with a, a comforting word. And it begins in such an unusual spot, doesn't it? 
not in the midst of Jacob being easily taken away from the problems that he was going to have, but in the midst of his fleeing from God. And it didn't come and say, don't worry, I've taken care of it, go home now. I'd rather it comes by from God with a deep spiritual truth. And it's very simple, isn't it? That God was with him. That the Father is the fount of all the blessings that come. The heavens were opened, and what he saw in his dream was Jacob's ladder, we call, right? With the angels ascending and descending, coming from that spot on earth, right where Jacob was, into the glories of the heavenly Father. That was the promise he was receiving, that my, you are my child and I am your God. That ladder is remarkable, for it marked the very place for Jacob where God was to be found. And he named the place he was sleeping that night Bethel, the house of God. For he knew there God resided. There he knew that God was for him and had not rejected him. There he learned the great promises of God were true. And he heard them reiterated to him time and time again there. Here you will meet me. Here you will know and return to this place. Here you will know for sure that your descendants will go to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south, and all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. For you are bringing the Savior into this world. This truly was the house of God. It's kind of funny. We're not really sure where Bethel was. One man, who's a pretty wise individual, thinks that he was sleeping on Mount Calvary that night. And do you know why? Because Jesus talks about this very verse as well. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking with Nathaniel, who despised the first thoughts of Jesus and said, Could anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, he was thinking nothing good. And Jesus looked at him and said, Oh, Nathaniel, truly here's an Israelite in whom there is no God. In no guile, excuse me. And Jake, I mean, excuse me, Nathaniel was flabbergasted. And he said, Truly you are the Son of God. And Jesus says to him, You think this is remarkable? You will see this, that the heavens will open and the angels of God will come down and go back up upon me. That's what Jesus says. Not upon a plot of earth. They'll ascend and descend, not to a specific place, but upon him, upon Jesus. For there is where God is found. No longer at some place called Bethel in the Middle East, but in the person of Jesus. I am the one where you find God. That is what Jesus was teaching Nathaniel. The angels ascend and descend upon me. For I am one with my Father, and my Father is one with me. And if you want to know God, then you look at me. For in Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. See, that is what is happening here. Is Jesus is saying, I am the house of God. I am the one to whom you look to know what God thinks about you. And so he comes and calls us to faith with Jacob. Do you realize what's happening here today? Jesus is making his place amongst us. Jesus is coming right here, and Jesus right here is making this his dwelling place. Here, the heavens are open, and the angels ascend and descend. Here, we meet God face to face, for here, we meet Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. In that words of the absolution, Christ has come to you, and we meet Jesus. It comes in the words of the gospel when we hear again that Jesus not only forgives sins, but he gives life and healing as well. 
Will you realize what is going on here? We confess the truth about our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that this Jesus died for us. It's in this supper, this bread and wine, that Christ comes to us and says, here you see the true face of God, that he is not for, against you but for you. Though your sins be as red as could be, they shall become white as wool, for our Jesus forgives us, and that is the heart of God. Do you realize what that means? It means this is holy ground that we come into this building, it's not like going into a gym. For this is a place, through his word, that God has promised to meet us. That in the midst of the struggles of this life that seem overwhelming, in the midst of our fears and our worries and the bad days that pile upon each other, that Jesus says he will meet us here. And that he has brought to us what is necessary. He has brought to us forgiveness of sins. And then even as bad as the days may get, and even when we feel like we are fleeing from it all like Jacob, we know this basic truth, that our God is not against us but for us. That he invites us to call him Father for Jesus' sake, to look at him as a child looks at their father with tender love. See, that is the gift we have. And what a blessing Jacob heard that, isn't it? For you see, Jacob, his descendants did spread out over all the earth. And he did bring blessings to those who weren't from Jacob. People like you and me. People who have no relationship to Jacob at all. Outside of our sin and God's grace. For Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world, of which you and I are part of. We get this grace, this promise, because of his love and his mercy. And there's one more promise of Jacob I want us to think about. It's the promise that Jacob was given. That even amidst, as you flee away from here, God says to Jacob, I will bring you back to this very spot. I will bring you back to the land I have promised you. And it would take 20 years. But Jacob would return. Children and flocks and herds and wives and just a whole group of people. He had returned to his promised land. And you see, that's what we wait for too. We live today knowing we have a good and gracious God. We live today knowing our sins forgiven, and yet we wait for that turn to the promised land. We wait for when we are led to see our Lord Jesus face to face. We wait for that day that we just sang about just a few moments ago when we will be called from the tomb, and we will see our Lord Jesus, and we will meet him face to face. For it is in Christ alone that we learn to know our God, and we will see our God, for we will rise in him and live with him. We may have to wait. <laughs> There's no doubt about that, is there? But we wait in faith and in hope. We indeed live in those times when there are troubles. We can look at in our societies, we can look at our homes, but maybe even more really, we can look at our hearts. We bear the name of Jesus in this world. And that brings us comfort on one hand, doesn't it? But on the other hand, well, here's the problem. This brings opposition and even hatred. We live by the promises that God gives us for our comfort, even as Jacob did. For God is with us in Jesus. Jesus is here in our midst. The word we read, the word proclaimed, the absolution, the meal, it's all the one thing, that we might see our God and take hope and comfort in our times of trouble. Make no mistake, we may see our God, but the struggles and the battles will continue in this life. 
but never forget the promise that we will see our God, we will see our Jesus, and we will be with him as we, like Jacob, take hope and comfort in the abundant promises of our God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. We rise for the offertory. You may be seated as we worship the Lord with our offerings. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in a world that is troubled and in lives and hearts that are often troubled, that you have granted to us the gracious promises that have come in Jesus, that even in the midst of our troubles we might know that you are a gracious God, for in Jesus you have brought forgiveness and life to us. Grant to us the faith that we need, that we may walk through these problems in faith, and that we may live always in the joy and the anticipation of not only of your forgiveness today, but eternally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd be with our congregation, bless our members that by your goodness they might receive your gifts with joy and thanksgiving. Be with our family spread throughout the world, that by your goodness those who are facing martyrdom for the name of Jesus might be strengthened, we pray as well that you would bless our mission of the month, our, the voice of the martyrs, as he seek to aid and to help those who are suffering for the sake of Jesus. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have gathered us in this church and in this school that we might give you praise and thanks. Remind us always that we are here to bear witness to your Son in Jesus. And may we as a church and a school proclaim Christ and him crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the gifts of this life. We thank you for the gifts of marriage that you have given to Chris and Laurel as they celebrate their anniversary. May they continue to grow in faith and in love. We pray, Lord, that you would hear us in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, too, for those celebrating birthdays, for Paul, for Erna, that by your goodness their birthdays might bring us great joy and we might enjoy the faithful witness they bear to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hospitalized, who are sick and ill, that you would watch over them, keep them safe. Grant continued healing to Virginia and Annalise as they have left the hospital. Grant that by your mercies they may find health at your hand. We pray for those we know and we name in our hearts. We pray for the mentally ill, that they might find peace in this life in the midst of the many troubles they have, and that they can look forward to the day when they live at rest with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who mourn at the time of death. We pray for the family and friends of Ela Brandt, for the family and friends of Joe Adamo, as they mourn the passing. Give to those who mourn the hope that those who die in the faith rise to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for peace in our nation that where there is unrest, you might find ways to, to work justice, that there might be repentance, and that by your goodness all might see their sin and see the way they have harmed others, either wittingly or unwittingly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the leaders of our nation, be with the leaders of our church body, and be with the leaders of our congregation, that by your goodness they had all fulfill the duties you have given to them, and that each in their way that you have called them might promote your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be of the city of Detroit and those of us in our suburbs, that by your grace there might be uh, peace amongst us, that there might be jobs in abundance, that there might be workers for the jobs in which openings cannot be filled. But most of all, let those who are your children proclaim the love of Christ that all might know your word in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.